All right, little bonus material. This is the STK5441 out of the Sony SLHF400. And as you can see, the date code or the code on the back, 5441CFA5E possibly. Hard to tell. And the date code on the front, 5F19. I do believe this is probably the original STK chip from manufacturer in 1985 in the Sony Betamax. So I want to try to pop this thing open. See if we can figure out what went on with this chip. Now sometimes you can just grab these and give them just a little extra inclination and they'll start to pop apart. Try it on both sides. It will destroy your chip, however. So if you want this to continue working, do not do this. And we are in. Okay. Let's get a macro zoom enabled. One moment. All right, well, there is the internal view of the chip with the cover removed. Normally what you'll see is one of these big power transistors will have just failed. And you'll normally get a, a shirt stain on it there. Uh, these look perfectly fine. I don't see any stains on them whatsoever. I do see basically corrosion on the little block that it's mounted to. Sometimes you'll see some of these connection wires will be vaporized because of other issues, overcurrent and whatnot. And uh, wow, that one is quite complex. I wish I had a better macro zoom available, but even with the minimal macro zoom that I have, there's a lot going on on that. Must be a regulator right there. Looks like discrete transistors there. So far, everything looks good, <clears throat> at least in my estimation. Sometimes you'll find these pins break off. Everyone looks absolutely perfect, soldered excellently. So what happened to this thing? I don't really see any telltale signs of what might have caused it to fail. I do have it in manual exposure. Let me go ahead and enable the auto magical exposure. So it might brighten up some of the dark areas possibly. Not sure what that is right there. Probably a printed resistor if I had to guess. And I'm not quite sure why. Let me get a pointing apparatus here. I'm not quite sure why that is brown and fading off. That's kind of interesting. Now, I do believe all these are single-sided boards. So I believe that's a printed resistor right there. And then we got that brown right there again. But not seeing any real super issues. I think this is a printed resistor across here. Another brown and fading. Maybe it just got old. There's a big old printed resistor right there. Huh. Well, I don't really see any uh, culprits in this chip. So if anybody sees anything, just point out a timestamp. Because remember, the 5.5 volts was working on this unit. It was missing the 9 and the 12 volts. I'm betting something on that chip right there became contaminated, if I had to guess. But once again, it's just a guess. Yeah, not really seeing any major, major problems with this thing at all.
wish I had a better microscope. I'd really love to zoom in on those little tiny transistors and see if there's any damage down there. Although that one in the upper right hand corner, it doesn't look like the rest. I can't tell. So I thought what I would try is let's zoom out of here. And we'll try to get as close of a regular zoom as we can get. I just passed it. Probably right about there. So what I'm gonna do is lock the focus now. And then I will pump up the exposure. Just a tad like that. Let me get a voltmeter out. And hopefully I can, nope, still too close. One moment. We'll zoom out just a little bit. I'll put this in the diode range and we'll just see if we can possibly test these components. So I do get a diode junction there and no diode junction there. Nothing there. Hopefully I don't, now I might have damaged that one by touching it. 841. Yeah, I'm sure my hand is right in the way of that. So yeah, 842 that way. I'm not seeing a complete junction on that transistor at all. Nothing there. Nothing there. Reverse the leads, make sure I got continuity. Yes, I do. I'm touching those leads. Yeah, I'm not seeing a junction. I'm seeing 1912 on that one. 484 that way. Five forty nine that way. What nineteen sixty one there? Nineteen twelve there, and then the opposite direction. Open and open. Something just not adding up with that one right there. So I'm betting that's the probably the twelve volt regulator, which is not working because the nine volt regulator gets its supply from the 12 volt regulator. I thought I had a printout of the internals of the chip somewhere. And I do. So there is the internal diagram of the chip. Oh, one is a Darlington, okay. Uh, so what outputs on pin 10? Nothing that it shows. Let me get the Sony schematic here. Yeah, nothing really outputs on pin 10. Interesting. So pin one is the 5.5 volt output. So it looks like that's IC1, probably that big yellowish chip right there. And then the nine volt output I have noted here is gonna be pin five. Where is pin five? Well, they're showing V01, which is the 12 volt output through TR2 right there. So seven and nine. It looks like seven goes up to right there. And 
I can't tell where 9 actually goes to. So there's pin 7. Okay, so pin 7 is connected to that pin. Hopefully you can still see what I'm doing. And then pin 9 is connected right there. So that would be the 12 volt regulator. So I do believe that transistor is definitely defective. So that's VO1 between pin seven and pin nine. And then VO2, that's output number two, is between pin eight and pin 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it is pin eight. Pin eight connects there. And pin 10 does connect there. So that's the nine volt regulator. VO3 is pin one. And it looks like the input is pin six. Um, so yeah, pin one kind of comes up and around town and it does go to that one pin that bridges over to that chip. So that's the 5.5 volt regulator right there. So I'm going to say that we definitely have a failure with TR2 because I cannot check a junction on that one. Now this one is Darlington and I could see junctions on it for the nine volt. So I do believe that we just lost that 12 volt. Uh, past transistor. <clears throat> Anyhow, that's it. There's the schematic from Sony. And then here are some uh, data on the STK5441 and some notes that I made during load testing. Well, I certainly hope that somebody enjoyed the bonus footage. Everyone have a great day. Thanks for watching once again. Bye-bye.